This will rival the larger CO2 lasers that is double, triple, and quadruple the price. This is why everybody is going crazy over this for. This is the Xtol D1 laser cutter and engraver from Makeblock. And in this video, I am going to show you just how easy this laser is to use and run you through some really awesome projects. I'm warning you now, if you watch this video, you are probably going to want one of these. Let's check this out. The first thing that hit me about this laser was the overall build quality. Compared to other lasers I've seen, this fits into a category of its own. Down to the frame, all of the components, even the laser itself. The entire assembly process of the Xtol D1 took about 25 minutes. Not bad at all. If you need step-by-step -step instructions, Xtol has a short tutorial on their YouTube channel. For the first project, we are going to engrave some slate tile. You can already tell that I've been at practice. Now we are briefly going to run through connecting the laser to the computer and using the software laser bots with this first project. So hang with me for a minute, then we are going to run through the other projects at a faster pace. Step one, connect the power cord to your laser and the USB cord from the laser to the computer. Step two, install the provided software, which is called LaserBox. Head over to Xtool's website, then you will see the link to download it. Number three, power on the laser. When you do this, you will hear the fan turn on and see the red crosshairs. Step four, set the laser focus. Put whatever material that you are working with underneath the laser module. Now loosen the screw on the side of the laser module and move to the right and put the focus ruler down until it touches the material that you are working with. Tighten the screw back up on the left side and fold up the focus ruler. And finally, step five, we are going to import our images and engrave. When you open up the laser box software, it is going to look like this. Now you can see here, I'm not connected to my laser because I do not have it turned on. The first thing we are going to do is click over here at menu, hit import, and we are going to import our image. Now this is what it looks like, and you can see the size over here is in millimeters. Now 100 millimeters is equivalent, let's see here, to about 3.93 inches. So if this is four inches by four inches, which is the size of this, my engraving area is going to be much much smaller. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to resize this down here. And so I'm thinking right around 85 should be good. You can go over here or just manually type it in, which I'm going to do. So for the power, you guys can write this down. I'm going to take this to 70 and the speed is going to be 126 millimeters a second. And I am going to take my sharpness all the way up. I'm not going to worry with any other setting. I will tackle those in another tutorial. The laser is already dead centered in the middle of the coaster. So all we need to do now is to turn the laser on. You're going to go up here where it says not connected and click on laser box and hit the start button. And on this next screen, I am going to take the blue dot and set it in the middle of the image. This is going to set the position of the laser relative to the image we are engraving. Now, if I hit the framing button, this is going to show us where the edges of the font is going to be. And that is looking pretty good. And I think we are leveled there. Now let's hit start and go for it. Be sure to use the provided safety glasses anytime that you are using this laser. This blocks the specific wavelength of light that the laser is emitting and it will help guard your eyes. I will tell you, I did kind of eyeball this. If I wanted to be more exact, I could make some sort of jig or measure the inside of the coaster and put a dot or something with a pencil. Oh yeah, that is looking super good. I'm going to give you guys a pro tip here. If you want the etchings on these coasters to look better, get you some clear coat lacquer and spray on. It will make it look a million times better. This slate coaster turned out really cool and the lacquer made the design pop. 
I'm going to make a few more of these for a local coffee shop and other businesses in my town that I do photography work for. I also know these coasters are going to be a huge hit at my family Christmas parties. For my first wood engraving, I decided to put my logo on this custom gift box. This turned out fantastic for being my first time using this laser. I will definitely use this to put my logo on all of the products I sell. Now let's try a realistic portrait. I see many people online putting family portraits on wood and different types of material. Now there are a few extra steps involved in prepping the image when you are engraving a portrait, but once you get it down, it's pretty easy. This is a portrait of the actor Ray Liotta on a thin piece of birch ply. It took quite a few tries before I nailed the setting in, but I finally got it down. I have seen a lot of people on Etsy sell a lot of family portraits and engravings just like this one, whether it be superheroes or just something really cool, so I can't wait to do more of these. For the next project, I am going to etch white ceramic tile. In order to etch properly, I am using Rust-Oleum Satin Smoky Beige Paint and Primer from the recommendation of Nick from the Build Dead Build YouTube channel. I put a thin coat on these and let them dry overnight. Before I started this project, I grabbed a test file from the Xtool Facebook group to help me dial in the settings. I actually recommend doing this for any project, by the way. I will link the file below for you to download. The portrait I am engraving is a pug in glasses. I processed the image through a website called Imager to prep it for etching. I will cover this more in depth in another video though. Okay, we just got through engraving our tile. I did a test tile here and you can see the difference in the color because I have to remove the paint off this with some paint thinner. And just start wiping away. I can't wait to see this. Oh yeah, it's already coming off. Okay, this is cleaned up pretty nice here. Next step is just to make sure all the paint thinner is off here and clean up the sink area. This turned out nice, but I think it needs to be a little darker. Still cool nonetheless. Now for my second favorite project, we are going to engrave a hammer. This was so simple guys. I typed the font into the Laserbox software, adjusted it, lined the hammer up and began engraving. This hammer cost me around $8 at Harbor Freight, and I can sell this probably for around $40 online. Guys, the income potential for this machine is insane. I think I'm gonna do quite a few of these and just put online. I've actually had some requests for different custom hammers before, and this is a great way to get bulk orders out. And looking on Etsy, there are a ton of people that are engraving hammers like this. The income potential for this laser is insane. I mean, anyone can do this. It's just so cool. So many ways to be creative and make money. Let's test this out on a thin piece of leather. I am going to do a Mandalorian helmet and cut a circle around it. This is so stinking fun, guys. I mean, look at this. This is so cool. All my friends that came over that saw this was like, oh my gosh, I just want to go around the house and start engraving everything. Now, let me show you one of the most amazing components that you can get with this machine. This is the RA2 Pro, which is the world's first four-in-one rotary attachment. 
This is a roller rotary, a chuck rotary, a sphere rotary, and a ring rotary. It can support irregular sized cylinders, tumblers, and mugs with a handle. A full comprehensive review of this attachment will be in another video, but we are at least going to try this out with the rotary rollers. In order to use the RA2 Pro, we need to put the extender feet on the laser and plug it in. Since I am engraving a tumbler in a mason jar, I am only going to use the roller rotary. For the first engraving, I am doing a Mandalorian design on a tumbler. It is important that you click cylinder working before you engrave. This lets the program know we have the RA2 attachment attached. I am going to save this a ton of time here and tell you that I had the tumbler on the rotary backwards and I was so confused about the orientation of the design. Fail. I made a few mess ups, then I finally got it right. You probably noticed the dust collector in a lot of these shots. That is helping with my airflow from where the laser is burning and also helping with the smoke extraction and the smell coming from engraving the different products. X-Tool does have an air assist tool, which I do recommend that will help get all the smoke out of the way of the engravings and it will make your engraving quality better. I should be receiving mine soon, but I did not have one for this video, but I did want to let you guys know that that is a great upgrade if you get one of these machines. To clean the tumbler, I am using water and a magic eraser. Wow. This turned out pretty well, but my tumbler was a little sideways on the RA2 attachment, and you can kind of see where the fonts kind of go up at an angle, but you know what? This is one of my first times using this, so I'm gonna take it easy on myself. So you guys always get you some test pieces because I messed this one up and it was brand new. So it's just part of the game, guys. For the next project, I am etching a glass mason jar. To do this, I am coating it with chalk paint and letting it dry for 24 hours. I did make a small mess up on this, so I had to redo the image and make it larger. Now I am going to remove the black chalk paint and I'm using paint thinner to do this. This was my first time etching glass and it came out super good. I'm honestly impressed with myself considering the tumbler said I messed up the first time. So this is really good to nail this on the first, well actually it was the second try. But anyway, still good nonetheless. There are so many things you can do with this laser, and I didn't even cover how it can cut through material, but I am saving the laser cutting for another video. This starts around $900 and goes up depending on the attachments and the kit that you get. And I will tell you, this will rival larger CO2 lasers that is double and triple and quadruple the price. And this is why this is getting so popular. There are a lot of other good lasers out there, but what x -Tool has done here has been very special in terms of quality and even price-wise for what you are getting. There are three different versions of the laser module that you can get. That is the 5, the 10, and the 20 watt. Obviously, the 20 watt is more powerful and can do a little bit Bit more but I am using the 10 watt and it is serving my purposes great and if you were to ask me Matt this is cool and all but why do I need to get a laser well I'm going to give you my two reasons yours may be different but here are mine number one the creative freedom that this laser provides I have had so much fun with this laser since I've had it and when I got this in I got so motivated, it is like someone took a switch on the inside of me and just flipped it on. You may not consider yourself a creative person, and that's okay, because all you're doing here essentially is dropping in an image in the software, adjusting the settings, and hitting the start button, and the results speak for themselves. There are a few learning curves along the way, but for the most part, it's just getting used to how this tool functions. 
Number two is income potential. I have seen so many people scale their laser businesses and make so much money without any prior experience whatsoever with a laser. And a lot of people are engraving these tumblers for local businesses and making their money back in one go. I'm looking at the potential of this machine and it is just blowing my mind because I am seeing just everyday people without any prior experience having so much success and becoming entrepreneurs from using this laser machine. I've been making handmade products for years and I know this is going to complement that very well. In fact, I already have orders coming in and I'm still learning to use this thing. I will post a link of this XTool D1 laser below. And these are affiliate links, meaning that if I make a sale through these, I will get a small kickback. This is a great way that you can help support my channel. So if you do get one, going through the links would mean the world to me. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, hit the thumbs up below and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, save this video, bookmark it somewhere, that way you can come back and see the settings that I use for each project. It will help you when you get started. All of the tools and supplies are listed below. I will see you soon. Post a question below if you have any.